Okay, so welcome back. This is Discrete Math Part 2. Uh, in the last video, I went over uh, truth tables, and I am Aaron. So let's get started. So in the last one, I went over and, or, not, and then uh, gates um, and our basic variable definitions there. So if you're unsure of that, refer to our previous video. But today, we're going to talk about order of operations of handling uh, these gates. So uh, when we're talking about what we should look at when we're trying to figure out a gate, we can start with different uh, types of orders. So uh, just like in PEMDAS, we start with our parentheses first, and then our uh, not, and then we do our ands, ors, or thens in order to complete the statement. So in this example, I have written out all the possible combinations of P and Q just in the last one. And we can see that we, I split this up into uh, two simple ones and then two very complex ones here. Actually, three simple ones, two very complex. So the reason why I did that is that we can use this, these simple columns, in order to help us figure out these more complex columns here. So when we're looking at this, we can start plugging away at the different orders. So uh, again, from the basic tutorial that I did, we have a not P, so it's the exact opposite of whatever P is. So let me write that out very quickly. So we have false, false, true, true. And the same thing with not P, we have false, true, false, true. Uh, it's just the exact opposite, so nothing really that special. And then the last one we have P and Q. So they both have to be true in order for this to be true. So this is false, everything else is false. We need one true statement in that. And then this one is a idea of a complex one. So I showed you how we have the uh, not P. And since that's the second one down in my little list of order of operations, I'm pretty sure that if you go online you can find a more complete list, but that's a basic list. Um, this not P has to be done first. So when we're looking at this, we're going to look at both the not P column and the Q column to see if this is true. So if we're looking at this one, this one is false. These two statements, this not P and this Q statement, one of them is false, so this is false. And the second one down, these are both false, so this is false. Oops, sorry, I wrote true. These are both false. Uh, this one down here, they're both true, so this is true. And one of these is false, so this is also false. So you can see that the order of operations goes this not P first. So you can always add more row, uh, more columns to your uh, truth table if you're unsure how to do something complex. So in the last one, we're going to look at this whole part here. This is actually a P. My handwriting got a little bit messy on that one. But now we're looking at this complex part. So this one and a P. So we're looking at technically this column here and this one here. And if they're both true on one of these columns, then it's true. So the first one here, if we're looking, this one's false and that one's true. So one of them's false, so that's false. And this one here, one's true and one's false, so that's also false. This one, one of them's false, so that's false. And then one of these is false, therefore this is false. So that's a basic look of compounded um, answers, I guess you can call it, for different types of truth tables. And in the next one, in the next video that I'm going to do, I'm going to try and explain um, statements that are need certain premises in order to have a complete truth table. So join me on the next one.